listening to Option Paralysis, it's like we, we can understand that the Dillinger escape plan have uh, you know entered a new ter new territory oh, in yeah, yeah, music, yeah. you know? Yeah, I think we're in like a different era of our band right now. We turned some type of page, I think, with this record and uh I, I think we're just entering a different it's like being a teenager instead of being a little kid, you mm -hmm. know? I think we're just in a different part of our existence. So, and I think this record was the record that we all kind of understood that was ha that that was happening. So, mm -hmm. I'm really excited. It feels like a very exciting time for us. What is the what are you the, the the most proud of uh, of this album? I think Farewell Mona Lisa is uh if I had to play a song for someone that had never heard the Dillinger Escape Plan before, I think Farewell Mona Lisa might be the best overall song where you yeah. can kind of get a little bit of every single thing that we do and it still is a good song it's not it doesn't feel like it's all over the place even though yeah. there's a lot of stuff going on and uh widower i know that ben and i are really really proud of just because we really took ourselves really far out of what we were typically known for mm -hmm. and i think uh I, i think we ended up doing it pretty well a lot of people that i i, I thought people weren't going to get that song and yeah. a lot of people have told me that it's one of their favorite songs on the album yeah, of so course. that's Because really there, cool there is power there, is, there are melodies and but it's hard to do that you know it's yeah. easy when you've been doing it for a long time to kind of hide behind tons of distortion and screaming and fast speed and things like that because we doing that for us is like second nature we could write a whole record of like the crazy songs pretty easily but to, that song is very is a very naked song you can hear every word that i'm saying like you can you know, hear every note that's being played, so there's really no way to, uh, you're just like, it's like you're standing naked in front of a classroom or something, you know, it's kind of, at first, a little intimidating, you know. So if we can sum up the, the Dillinger escape plan work in a, in a world so predictable, as, right. you, as you mentioned yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in several interviews, uh, so the, the band become, becomes more and more unpredictable in Yeah, Chile. I think that's a good thing for us because, uh, you know, it's funny, so many uh, bands end up uh, getting bigger because they follow a trend, mm -hmm. and that's fine, you know, it's not, there's nothing wrong with that, you know, there's a lot of bands that got really big from playing thrash metal when thrash metal was getting popular, or playing mm -hmm. grunge when grunge was getting popular, and for us, we've always struggled to find a scene to fit into, and uh, eventually I think we just realized that it would be better if we kind of just carved our own path and uh if the people come they come and if they don't they don't and i, I kind of think at, at this point in time that was the smartest thing we could have ever done is uh refuse to be predictable and try to take people on different turns and things like that because that has become our uh that's become our our our, our path now you mm -hmm. know and, and before you know if we'd have, if we'd have focused more on one thing or more on another thing or if we'd have been afraid to make changes or take new directions, we would have ended up being stuck. You know? And you you don't repeat yourself, maybe because uh, I read that you you don't listen to, to metal, actually. Right, I actually... Uh, I, why? Because uh, you, you you hear new stuff. Uh, you know what, I love metal, like I love it. It's one of my favorite kinds of music, but I can't listen to it a lot because I think, and all of us are the same way, you know, we grew up loving metal and I still love it. You know, I can still put on, you know, death or suffocation or any of that stuff and it sounds amazing to me you know but uh i can't listen to too many of our contemporaries because it's so easy to get influenced by something even if mm. you're not aware of it consciously you can get influenced by something unconsciously and i think if you listen to a lot of your peers you're going to end up sounding like them you know it's like you sh I, i would rather listen to a record that no one's ever heard or listen to a, a stevie wonder song or listen to a jazz song or even like a fucking lady gaga song something that's a different thing that we're used to and hear something in that that ends up finding its way through to us somehow rather so what, than... What's your, your I mean, how many ways of... am I going to learn how to scream? How many times am I going <laughs> to hear someone scream that's going to be like, oh yeah, I gotta, that sounds killer. You know, we, what, what's your best album, actually? Where, where, my you, favorite record of yeah, all time? Oh, um, in, in all time, or what do you hear at this, at this point, uh, at this moment? Ah, oh, man. Um, I mean, if I had to list the most pivotal record in my life, I've, mm -hmm. I've said this many times, Metallica Justice for All was the mm -hmm. record that really, like, I think hit me the hardest, Appetite for Destruction. I mean, I was a kid, that's when I was a kid, and, and maybe seven, eight, nine years old. So around that time, so many cool things came out. You know, I, I, I got Guns N' Roses, you know, Metallica, Slayer, you know, Faith No More, um, you know, Rage Against the Machine, Nirvana, like, all that stuff came out okay. in, like, a three so or four year. So this is for for the metal or rock part and uh, on yeah, the other yeah. part maybe oh, man. Stevie Wonder or I love Stevie Wonder man I like Prince a lot 
um, guys who really have a lot of talent and weren't afraid to do their own thing, you know. I mean, Prince, to me, is, you know, I don't like all his stuff, but he's fucking phenomenal, man. And if you've ever seen him in concert, it'll blow your mind. Like, full-on blow your mind. And, uh... What do you feel when, you, when you're singing the, in the seventh or eighth song of the album? Maybe, you know, you... You, 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 maybe you can sing like Prince yeah. you know in a uh, there's a new guy there's an R&B guy out now named John Legend who is really really good I just I like people that, that write their own songs you know what I mean I like people that sing from the heart I don't care if they even have a good voice like Bob Dylan <laughs> obviously can't sing yeah. but I would rather hear Bob Dylan sing than some fucking American Idol singer you know so it's just about finding people that are honest you know, it doesn't matter what style of music it is and I'd like you know a very personal question because You know, every time uh, I saw you, it was very, you know, in your face, very, yeah, yeah, yeah. very sincere. Um, uh, so can you can feel earth that the, all your foolishness on stage, all your, your talents, emotions, energy are 100 natural? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, no, no GMO? No, 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 no. GMO? <laughs> no, no, no. If I, I would be embarrassed, man. Like if you, to me, like performing has to be complete instinct. You know, if you think about something ahead of time, It's already corrupted. That's theater at that point, and I don't want to do theater. If I did, I would be doing it. You know, mm. to me, uh, when the day comes that I don't want to fucking run around or I don't want to jump on people or that I don't want to scream, I'll stop doing it. It's not like we have to do this. You know, I could go be a fucking mailman or a garbage man. Or, you know, we could <laughs> we could do whatever. You know, we could we could. You know, there's a million times that we've been asked to like work for like record companies or like, you know, management teams or some for the you know record industry. You know, and. Uh, So, I mean, the fact that we're doing this and the fact that we perform the way we do is because it f comes naturally to us and it still feels honest. But, but, yeah, if one day I beat it out of my system completely and I get on stage and I realize that, like, the movie, the music doesn't make me feel the way it used to, mm -hmm. just stop, man, because you don't want to lie to people, you know? Okay, so uh, you're full of energy tonight? Uh, I've Honestly, <laughs> man, I've, I was talking to uh, some friends of mine earlier. I've, I haven't been this excited for the start of a tour in a long time. In yeah. a really long time. There's something about... We haven't played in a month, you know? Mm -hmm. So if, it's like you're not fucking for a month or something. You know what I mean? Like you get so frustrated. And then, uh, you know, when I read those comments, like when we read the comments on like Facebook or Twitter, like, you know, I can't wait for you guys to come to Paris or you guys better fuck shit up when you come to Paris. It's almost like a challenge to yourself. Mm -hmm. You're like, all right, yeah, we do have to fuck it. interview I was here you know uh, on the first mm -hmm. Dillinger Escape Land tour with uh, yeah 99 wow man that's crazy with Botch yeah. and Ananta you've been around longer than I have yeah <laughs> May maybe the really really yeah. I'm very very sincere maybe the, the best show ever I've seen you know wow. I can remember that's incredible you know was Shora on that tour were they was it Dillinger Botch yeah. and Ananta like Botch Ananda was on the tour yeah. okay yeah yeah and Botch was you know incredible, incredible. yeah and I I hope they are watching this video interview because I'm Reunite. a huge, Just huge, huge fan of Butch. Yeah, you know? yeah. Really. Uh, no, they so, should get back together, man. Yeah. They should do it. So, uh, it was 10 years ago. Where will we be in 10 years? I didn't think that we were still going to be a band. If you'd have asked me six years ago if we were still going to be a band today, I would have said there's no way, you know. So, uh, but, but that's kind of what happened with Option Paralysis is that we realized that this is what we do for... Uh, 
our lives now. Mm -hmm. It's not like, and part of it was meeting Mike too, meeting Mike Garson and realizing that, hey, like you can still, you can get old and still have a young attitude. Mm -hmm. And for us, I mean, we're still pretty young, but you know, we see, you know, we each recently turned 30 and it makes you think about 40, you know what I mean? And then it makes you think about 50. So we're like, shit, you know, we were 21 and we thought we'd never even make it to 30 as a band. We all thought we would be doing something different by now. And the fact that we're still doing it and still love it and still excited about it just makes us realize that, you know, this is, uh, we can take this as long as we want, as long as the passion is still there. So yeah. all I can say is that if we're still doing it at 40, it'll be, you know, in 10 years, if we're still doing it in 10 years, it'll be because we want to do it, not because we need to make money, you know? Okay. Because there's no money to be made. <laughs> <laughs> so let's watch this video interview in 10 years, okay? All right, gotcha. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Thank you, man, again. And I have a great show, of course. Thank you, guys. Thank you.